Welcome to Y Lecture Online. Now let's take a look at that very same setup again, like we did in the previous two videos, but now with the difference is that we're finding the force required to accelerate the object upward at 4 meters per second squared. We still have the mass equal to 5 kilograms, the angle is still 60 degrees, and the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0 0.2. So what's different now? Well, in the previous two examples, we had constant velocity, which means acceleration was zero, which means the net force equals zero as well. But in this case, since there is, there is acceleration, the net force will not be zero, and so we definitely have to use F equals MA in this case. But just like before, we'll start by indicating all the forces acting on this particular object with mass M. And if we have a force acting at an angle like we have here, we have to find both the vertical and the horizontal component. So we start up here with F in the Y direction, and since that's adjacent to the angle, this will become F times the cosine of theta, as before. Cosine associated with Y seems kind of odd, but that's because the way the problem was drawn. If we draw a triangle here, you can clearly see that this is the adjacent side to the angle. And then the horizontal component, f in the x direction, is therefore going to be f times the sine of theta, because now this component here would be opposite to the angle. We also have the weight due to gravity, mg. And notice the direction of the friction can be found by saying, if there was no friction, what would be the direction of the object? And clearly the object would be pushed upward in this direction according to the acceleration direction. Therefore, the friction force will be in the opposite direction and we have the friction pointing downward. Force friction is going to be equal to the normal force times mu. The normal force is the wall pushing back and notice that this would have to be equal to this component right here because it's a reaction force to this component. So this becomes F times the sine of theta times mu, and of course we should write mu sub k since things are going to be moving. So now that we've identified all the forces, we're now ready to start with the equation. F net is equal to mass times acceleration. In this case, it's not zero, so we leave it like that. Now the net force is going to be all the forces aiding at acceleration minus all the forces opposing. When we say aiding, we mean forces in the same direction. Notice only one force pointing in the same direction, which is the Y component of F. The other two components, the weight and the friction force, are in the opposite direction to the acceleration, which means they're opposing the acceleration. So in this case, we have F times the cosine of theta. That's a force that aids acceleration minus the weight, which opposes acceleration, and minus the friction force, which is mg times the sine of theta times mu. Oop, not mg. Oh, let's try that again. It would be F times the sine of theta times mu, because in this case, the normal force is not caused by the weight of the object. The normal force is caused by this. Notice how we constantly have to pay attention to what we're doing, because if we let our brain go to autopilot, it may put down the wrong things like I just did, because typically the normal force is the weight times an angle times mu. So now we have the force aiding minus the two forces opposing equals the mass times acceleration. So since we're looking for F, we'll put all the terms with F on one side, everything else on the other side. So end up with F times the cosine of theta minus F times the sine of theta times mu sub k. Let's write mu sub k is equal to ma. And then here when we move that across, plus mg. So the force here doesn't only cause acceleration, it also holds the object up against gravity. Factoring out an F, we have F times the cosine of theta minus the sine of theta mu sub k is equal to ma plus mg. And finally, F will therefore equal to the force required to accelerate it plus the force required to hold it up against gravity divided by the cosine of theta minus the sine of theta times mu sub k. And so now we're ready to figure out what the force required will be to accelerate the object upward at 4 meters per second squared. So this is equal to the mass, 5 kilograms, times 4 meters per second squared, plus the mass, 5 kilograms, times 9.8 meters per second squared, all divided by the cosine of 60 degrees, 
minus the sine of 60 degrees times 0 0.2, which is the coefficient of kinetic friction. And so the force required will be, and so we have uh, 60, take the sine of that, times 0.2, I subtract that from 0.5, there was my mistake, and take the inverse of that, now we multiply that times, uh, let's see here, um, 49, that would be 49 plus 20, that would be 69, so times 69, and that gives us 211 newtons, 211 newtons, which would be the force required to accelerate that block up by 4 meters per second squared. So this gives you a really good series of three videos that give you a nice progressive comparison of how to calculate these various types of situations and how to look at all the forces using Newton's laws to identify what's going to happen to the block. That's how it's done.